This one will fit in the van, right? Yeah, I'll take it. There are all sorts of options for beds at IKEA, and some of those are the best options you can find for van dwelling and tiny houses, but not all of them. Let's take a look at which are the winners. We're here, the promised land of inexpensive modern furniture. And no, they're not paying me to say this. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people online talk about getting a normal futon for van dwelling, so it can be a couch and a bed. I mean, that's a great idea, and I even had that thought when I started out. But let's go over why a regular futon won't work that well. Let's see what IKEA has in that department. We've got these style of futons, which you could probably find some way to mount. You could put little brackets on there, but the problem is that they fold backwards, and you won't have the space if it's bolted down to turn it into bed mode. It has to go behind it. You can see some of the mechanisms below. They've got these styles, but that's kind of the same problem as the previous one. In fact, these might actually be the exact same futon, just with a different cover. I don't, I don't know. I didn't check. Okay, so here's like a real couch pull-out bed. I like the way that it looks, so let's take a quick look. So it pulls out this way. That's not too bad. You could probably do this in a van. You'd have to bend down, but it would work. Certainly in a tiny house, if you wanted, it would work. The pillows fall into the storage space in the middle, which you could put other things if you wanted. And then the back comes down like so. Okay, so that's almost that's almost practical. I was actually going to show why these wouldn't work, but this is a new design, I think. I don't recall this being around when I first decided to build out my van and IKEA furniture. Uh, the problem with the other futons is that they need more room in all directions to fold out. But this one's pretty compact. You could even bolt it against the wall and still unfold it. That's new. There is less storage underneath than in my custom design, but it's not terribly awful. I actually really like this one, but what's the downside? It's $500, which is probably way too expensive for a van setup. If I was building out like a brand new Sprinter, I'd definitely consider this one though. That would be sick. If anyone wants me to design and help build out a camper of that sort of budget, let me know. That'd be a fun video series too. We could do a lot with that. We could jumpstart a YouTube channel for you too, if you wanted. Okay, so let's take a look at what I did for my van. I built my own frame and then put one of the Ikea mattresses on top of it. Yeah, this one's gonna fit in my van, right? It's a big old king size. <laughs> Actually, is it a full? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so I cut one of the foam mattresses from Ikea into a very specific size, but which mattress? They have quite a few, so let's go through them with some pros and some cons. The big pro and the big con of them is that they're meant to be full mattresses, so they're a bit more pricey than just a foam pad you might find at a craft store. The good part of that, though, is that they won't break your back if you intend to sleep on it regularly. And that's important and often overlooked. Sleep is one third of your life or something like that. So you should consider investing in a good mattress. It'll, it'll make your health much better in the long run. I have the full size Minisund mattress. It's like four, I think, inches. And it's absolutely beautiful to sleep on. They make a six inch and even more inches foam mattress. But here's the thing with that. My bed is also my couch. And the six inch mattress is just too tall for me to sit up straight without hitting my head on the ceiling. It's also more expensive. If you had a high top van, might not be an issue. If I had the mattress any taller, I'd be hitting my head on the ceiling. Right now I got maybe a little bit of less than half an inch if I sit up you know, completely straight. So it was important I couldn't get the six inch mattress. But overall, it's super comfortable the way it is, only at four inches. You can see it right here. Ignore the mess down below, but you can see how thick the mattress is right now. It doesn't seem very thick, but it's actually really comfortable, really nice. I like it. It's good. You can see how it's in couch mode now. It would probably work a lot better if I cut it in half and had it rest like that. But it's not bad the way it is now. But I don't know. That could be a whole nother project that I have to do. That might make a good video, but I guess we'll see. But there's all different types of designs and sizes that offer multiple types of firmness and sleep style. What's cool about IKEA is that they got them all laid out and you can test them. They also have these mattress toppers, which are cheaper, but aren't meant to be a standalone mattress. They're meant to be mm, on top. <laughs> if you like really firm stuff or have another thinner mattress already, you could snag one of these and then modify your existing setup. I have a friend who did that in combo with some craft store foam, and that's a great bed. So here's back to the one that I like to recommend. It's the cheapest and comes in all sizes. I have the full size that I trimmed down just a bit to fit, but there's also a twin size that's fantastic for a solo bed. It's under $100, it's like 99, which 
you know, it's a hundred dollars. It's just thick enough to be a great night's sleep, but still lightweight enough that I can move it around the van and fold it in half to make a couch. Though, I might cut it in half to better accommodate couch mode. It kind of slumps together, because it is supposed to, it's a mattress. Future video project, maybe. Do we have time for bonus meme? The biggest question of the year. It's time. Oh, what's this? We're in luck. Here's a bonus meme. Here's a bonus little thing that I also had at IKEA while I was there. I've gotten some comments that the IKEA bookshelf that I love so much is discontinued. Or rather, just the birch color is discontinued. I'm sad to say that that is true at my local IKEA. They have some new colors now, but uh, they wouldn't work as good with my interior, so that's that's a bit sad for anyone looking to replicate the true Kopec experience. The wood grain is probably the closest. It's not bad looking though, it's just, it's just different. And that's our IKEA adventure for the day. Do you think you would ever use a pre-made futon yourself, or do you like the idea of building your own? I kind of liked to build my own. In fact, be sure to check out the videos where I go through those 3D plans on how to build your own futon. There's a link below and at the end of the video.